Hi everyone, in this video lecture we will see what is a UML class diagram. We know what is UML that we have seen in the previous video lecture. UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. It's a kind of a language and there are all two other nine diagrams that comes under UML. Among those nine, one is class diagrams. So now what is a class diagram? We know that the term class is used in object-oriented programming languages. So class diagrams are diagrams that we use to represent or to model object-oriented systems. And what does they represent or what does they show? Human class diagram shows a collection of classes, interfaces, associations, collaborations and constraints. So we know what's a class, what's an interface. Association means the kind of relationship that we have seen in the first video lecture and collaboration and constraints. So these are the things that are that will be described by a Now how to draw a human class diagram? The certain points that we have to remember when we start drawing a human class diagram. So these are those points. First of all, the name that we give to a human class diagram must be something meaningful. Instead of giving the class diagrams names as A, B or C, if we give some meaningful name, then it will be very easy for those who are looking at the picture to identify different classes involved in, this, in the system. So when we give the diagram a name, it must be something meaningful. Then before we start drawing our class diagram, we must keep in mind or we must define and identify all the elements in the system and the different kinds of relations that may occur between them. Responsibility in the sense the attributes that means the variables as well as the functions or methods of each class must be identified clearly. Then only we will be able to detect them in the or then only we will be able to add those variables and methods to our class diagram. When we represent a class in a class diagram, the number of properties that we are going to represent must be minimum. Instead of showing each and every minute member of a class, in that case our class diagram will become very bulk. Then the person who is looking at the diagram may find it difficult to understand it. So try to include only those attributes and methods that are very important in that class. Then like we add comments in our programs, we can also add notes so that notes in the sense documents is a part of documentation purpose. We can add our own definitions or we can add our own explanations at suitable places if it is required. Again in human class diagrams we know we have access control keywords like public, private, protected etc. So there are certain notations that we have to remember. So if you are getting a class diagram and if any method or a variable name is represented by using or if it is preceded by a plus symbol that means they are public. If they are preceded by a minus symbol or hyphen symbol that means they are private. And if they are preceded by a hash symbol that means they are protected. All these three words are access control keywords that we know. Public means all the elements can access, um, all members uh, even outside the class can access the members inside the class. Private means only those elements inside a class can access the elements of uh, private elements. Protected means only the child elements can access the elements of parent class. Okay, So when we design a class diagram, we have to keep in mind which are the public data, which are the private data, which are the protected data and we had to use these symbols to represent them. Similarly, if the question is to describe a UML class diagram and you are given with a UML class diagram, then you have to identify which are the public ones, which are the private elements, which are the protected elements. For that, we need to remember these symbols. So if you are given with a UML class diagram and if that class diagram consists of so many plus symbols means all of them are public. If there are some elements preceded by minus symbol that means they are private elements and if there are some elements that are preceded by hash symbol then they are protected elements. 
we know that objects are actually instances of a class so how can we represent objects in human class diagram object are represented in class diagram they are given the same name as that of the class if uh, to which class or the object belongs to which class the same class name is given to represent the object but only one difference is that the object names will be underlined now you will see one example for human class diagram this is a sample class diagram here the customer and order placement that's what we mean by this class diagram so we know how to represent a class see customer is one class order is another class and see the kind of relation special order and normal order they are not classes actually they are objects why because we can see how this normal order and special order are related to order by means of this generalization here it is mentioned clearly and we also know that this kind of arrow mark is used for representing generalization relation and generalization relation is used for representing inheritance so in this case special order and normal order are actually subclasses of the class order so here order is a parent class and these two are subclasses so when we draw this generalization arrow mark the arrow mark must, must be pointing towards a parent class so when we represent class such as a in class diagram the f we must have a, we must draw a box for each class then first first we can divide this class box into three or four divisions the first division must represent the class name the class name always begins a capital letter so you can see customer order special order normal order all these are class names then comes the variables or the attributes so here i have for customer i am using two variables their name and location both of them are of string type and then comes the methods see how we can represent a method by means of this parenthesis so this is these are the variables and these are the methods send order receive order similarly for other classes also we have we have mentioned the variable names and the method names here also the variable names and the method names here also the variable names and method names see confirm and close this met these methods are available in class order and since special order and normal order are subclasses of this class order both of these methods will be available for special order as well as normal order apart from those two methods this special order class can add its own method so here dispatch is actually a method that is added by the special order similarly normal order has got two other methods dispatch and receive apart from the methods it received from the class order that is confirm and close confirm and close this met this class received from its parent class order apart from that they have added dispatch and receive and see we have included one more relation here this relation is actually association i hope you remember what's a, what's an association relation it is used to represent a relation in which several elements participate so you can see here the num number 1 is written here and here it is run, it uh, written as n that means one customer can place n orders so it is actually one to many relationship so such relations are introduced by or represented by associations that's what we mean, we mean by this arrow mark this line so when we draw a class diagram we must give some meaningful names to classes okay customer order special order normal all these are meaningful names instead of writing it as a b c d then we must clearly identify the relationship between each of the classes whether it is inheritance or generalization or association then for each class we have to represent only the most important variables and the methods don't try to include each and everything of a class because then the diagram will become very huge and the readability of the program will decrease so this is about uml class diagrams the next video lecture i will explain about uml use case diagrams thank you so much